Greetings to you today from Rivers of Living Water Cathedral, 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. We are so glad that you joined us. Join me now as we hear what the Lord has put upon the heart of Apostle Dr. Robert L. Jones. Thank you, Reverend Swerd, and greetings to all of you that are tuning in to uh, watch and hear us. Greetings from Rivers of Living Water Ministries here in Fremont, Ohio. We have another real good one for you today. Today's title is A Question. Lord, what specifically will thou have me to do? Sister Jones, Pastor Joyce is coming and reading <coughs> some verses that kind of mirror each other because one is coming from the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, verses one through six, and the other as a testimony of the converted person <laughs> is coming from Acts, the 26th chapter, verses 12 through 18. Thank you, Sister Jones. In the chapter 9 of Acts, beginning at verse 1, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the brick. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. In the book of Acts, chapter 26, beginning at verse 12, Upon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But arise, and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom, to whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Pastor Joyce. You see two different happenings from the person that was Saul to the person that became Paul. Hallelujah. And the question that Saul asked, Lord, what? Wilt thou have me to do? I just threw another word up in there. What specifically are you calling me to do? I'll give you praise for this word that's going to go out and it will bless the lives of those that hear it on today. Lord, what will you have me to do? Lord, what is my purpose in your work? Lord, as an individual, as an individual, I'm talking about me and you, Lord. I, I, I don't want to hide behind a lot of folk up in church. I'm talking about you and me, Lord, as an individual. What is the specific thing that you have appointed? Point to yourself. Me. To do for you. What am I supposed to do? It becomes a very personal, it becomes very personal as one inquires of the Lord concerning his or her called out purpose. It becomes personal to you. Yeah, I, I, I can join the group and kind of hide out in the crowd and it looks like I'm in there if I'm doing something. But Lord, what specific thing have you called Bobby Jones? Throw your name up in there. Have you called? Come on, throw your name in that as you called to do. You see, the scripture said, For I am so wondrously and so marvelously made. I, so you just did not make me to be a copy of something, God. So you made me in how you wanted me to be. And you put things in me that Bobby Jones or Joyce Marie Simmons Jones or whatever your name is, you put something in them to do for the building of the kingdom of God and for the furtherance of the gospel of that kingdom. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Oh yes, we all understand for the most part our collective general purpose as a member of the body of Christ, we all understand that. You know, we come and we gather together, we do collective things. But even in the collective things that we do, Lady Washington God got something not just collective, but specific for you to do. You, 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 Each one of us. you are so important to God that he gave you a special job. You are not insignificant. There's something that he has written in the script with your name and response.
stability on. Amen. That script doesn't have my name or your name of something that I'm supposed to be doing. So the question is, oh Lord, what specific thing will you have me to do? And as I said, oh yes, we all understand for the most part our collective um, general purpose as a member of the body of Christ. Yet, knowing that, often one may be in wonderment concerning a specific call, like the specific call, for example, that um, Abraham had. The call on him. That his wife had. Was a call. There's things that you are called to do. You know, I... I I grew up with a speech impediment. I yet had it. Yeah. I think that when I was out with Deacon Kinsey and his wife on yesterday, they, they heard all my stuttering. So they knew that I not, had not been delivered. I'm going on 78 next month. And I stopped praying for deliverance from stuttering. I feel it's something that I guess I'll be delivered from that in heaven, I guess. Praise <laughs> <laughs> God. So, in my in my fear of getting before people, because I knew from a child up with speech therapy and everything that I had, yet that was on me the stuttering I had, and knowing that even called into areas where I was teaching such as as Sister I should know, we were together there at Terra and I'm in the position of an instructor, a teacher, a professor where I have to talk to people and somehow I was able to do all of that and God just gave me whatever I needed to perform, whatever needed to be performed. I happened to be, back in the day, a student in Pittsburgh, in the school that I had gone to after high school. And I was studying so terribly and so ashamed of studying but called into ministry. The pastor of the church, the late James Davis of the Miracle Church of God in Christ on 2500 Webster Avenue in the Hill District of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're tired <laughs> I, he put me with the team on radio ministry. And you know how precious time is. So you have to be talking fast and good to do radio ministry. Because we only had five minutes in that slot for each person. And the Lord when it came from my time to do whatever, he so equipped and blessed and enabled me to do. But he had told me these words in my prayer. Be not afraid of their faces. 
For I think of Jesus. Have put my words in your mouth. And whatsoever I tell you to say, you will say. Hallelujah. Now, as the Apostle Paul did in those days, whatever the thorn in the flesh that he had, the Bible tells us he prayed for deliverance from that thorn in his flesh at least three times. But it was, he was never delivered physically from that thing, whatever it was. But the Lord gave him a promise. Yes, yes, yes. The promise was to Paul then, my grace will get you through what you need to get through as you serve me. My grace is sufficient. It will get you through. If I give you a calling, my grace is there to help you to go through And I understood this. There's something about, this is why today I sometimes say to my wife, my stuttering I now see as a gift. Because it allowed me to stay in confident position with God and allow him to do a visitation with and on me on, on. to do whatever needs to be done. Amen. So I will not get the boastful big head and think it was me that did it. So Paul, I can deliver you, but if I deliver you, we will miss this special time that we have together for you to depend upon my sufficiency for you. Bobby Jones, I can deliver you, but if I do deliver you from that impediment, that speech impediment, then you will miss that special time that we have as you wait on me to speak through you. So I'm satisfied with the gift of study. <laughs> so yes, there is a, it leaves us in wonderment concerning the specific call that the Lord have on our life. So that not only am I serving you, God, in general, but also I'm serving you in a, in a special, in a specific way according to purpose. Come on, come on. That thing that you have set forth upon me at my birth. I'm not only have I joined the whole group to work as a group, but Lord you are you have single out people and said, this is for you to do. Not as a group, but for you to do. For the kingdom. Hallelujah. Just as Abraham was singled out. Just as many of those that we read in chapter 11 of Hebrews were all singled out to do whatever it was to do for 
the Lord. Now, praise God that we are in general service unto the Lord, but my question is, will you dare to ask a question that Saul asked before he became the Apostle Paul? What was that question? Lord, what is it? What specific thing are you calling me? To do. I'm reminded of my friend and my son who has gone on to be with the Lord. He always kept with him a bottle of anointing oil. You will see Brother Herrera going around the church. That was a specific thing. I wonder why he, I want, no, he's doing his specific. If you will look for your, your thing to do, you will be wondering about somebody else's thing that they're doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he would go and he would, he'd be, he, he had it even with them at Walmart, anointing people. Wherever he was, hard glory to God. That was his specific. Thing. And there is a thing that God has given each and every one of you to do. I dare you. From the show Christmas st story, I double dog did. To ask the Lord. Lord, and, and ask them and really mean it. Be sincere. Lord, what specific thing outside of just general service of you, what specific thing will you have me to do for you? After Saul's uh, transformation from a sinner to a saint, we find later in the book of Acts, the 26th chapter, uh, verses uh, 12 through 18, uh, he shares his conversion testimony with King Agrippa. And in verse 16 uh, of that uh, chapter, verse 16. But, uh, but right. And stand upon thy feet. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee. For I have appeared. Now he was testifying about his conversion to King Agrippa. So in chapter 9 it talks about his conversion and the conversion takes place and now he's talking to testifying the king of Ripa about his conversion. So he's sharing what happened to him to King Agrippa. And he goes on and said, But the I Lord told me to rise and to stand upon my feet. For I have appeared unto thee. And King, this is what he told me. This is what he told me. I have appeared I'm doing what he told me. I said, I'm doing yeah, yeah. what he told me. After he told me what he told me, and I did what I was supposed to do, I am now involved in the thing specifically that he told me. He said, I have appeared unto, that he had appeared unto me for this perfect, uh, for this perfect, for this purpose, to make me a minister. To make me, to make me, to make me, make, to make me, to make, 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 make. Yes, God is in the making, making, shaping, forming, making, making, making. making. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I appeared. Hallelujah, not to have you be like some of the copy, but hallelujah, but to make you. you. 
Make the eight minutes. So make you a minister and add it with a witness move of these things which thou hast seen. And of those things in which I will appear unto you. So there are things that you've already have seen, and I have put my faith in you because there are some things that you ain't seen yet that you have to do for me. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. That's it. So people will you let God make you and give you a specific call and purpose. Will you allow him to form you or, or are you so uh, kind of in a place where you are looking for someone to approve you? When you look for someone to approve you, you're really saying, I'm looking for somebody to control me. Because if I'm not approved by them, I can't do it. I don't care if God told me I need some people to approve me. So if they don't approve me, I can't do that, no matter what God said. Mm. Mm. So will you let God make you? Will you let God approve you? Will you let God give you your Specifics. Verse 18 of that. Uh, to of that open chapter. their eyes. Now I appear unto you, you so you can open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light. So you can turn. You, you need to see your purpose. I call it you because your job now is to open their eyes so now they have spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding and, and to, turn, and to them turn them from, from darkness, darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. And I am purposing you to turn them from the evils and the powers of Satan unto God. Unto the grace of God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and by you doing what I have specifically purposed you to do through your obedience they may receive forgiveness of sin of sin now you can't go by what you see no, you can't. you've got to go by what God purposed you to do because if you go by what you see, you won't do it. Because the ones that you will go to, you sometimes see so much ugliness in them until you begin to run the other way instead of doing what you've been sent to do. Hallelujah to the Lord. And it goes on to, uh, to say in that verse, that they may receive forgiveness of sin. That they may receive forgiveness of sin and, and they will receive inheritance among, among them, which them are that are sanctified by faith that is in me. That's it. Hallelujah. Yes, King Agrippa, this was the specific assignment that God gave me. And it was not in the flesh. It was not. It hasn't been easy. But I must be faithful to the specific purpose that God has called me unto. That specific thing that God has called you to accomplish must be accomplished by you. It got to be accomplished. You were called to it. As I said, as Brother Herrera went around anointed people, he was called. Lie 
lives changed because you didn't listen to those that criticized him. But he continued to lay his hand and anoint others to the glory. So that specific thing that he's called you to, Lady Jordan, get ready, get ready, get ready to do it. Amen. Well, I can't walk as good. God ain't, God ain't looking at how you can walk. Amen. What he's placed in you to do ain't got nothing to do with you walking. Oh, oh, my, my. Hallelujah. 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 What God has called you has nothing to do with your physical abilities. Right. Nope. I'm still a stutter. What God has called me to do has nothing to do with I stutter so many. Yeah. Come on. Oh, when God anoints your old broken down raggedy body. I preached a message years ago in Mansfield about your 98 cent body. And back in the day, that was the cost, that was the value of that day of the physical body when they broke it down to what it's composed of. It ended up in that day being worth 98 cents. Sometimes you do all these things, bad, brown, and still to put a thousand dollar alligator shoes on a 98 cent body. <laughs> a sable mink for ten thousand dollars to wear on a 98 cent body. So, God is not looking at that. No. He's looking at the call oh, yeah, not my son, that he's put in that 98 cent body. Now, with inflation, we know it's worth a little more than that. <laughs> Somebody said a buck two ninety. But yet and still, he's not concerned about that. He's concerned about your willingness to take that body and say, Lord, what's the specific, what specific thing have you called me to do out of this old 98 cent body? So you are rid from every excuse. You are inexcusable. Because when he comes to the Bible says we have this treasure in these 98 cent earthen vessels that the excellency of God of how I put it, the excellency is not in me, but of God. I think the time goes. So God puts himself in us and works through us. You're out. You're without excuse. Well, I'm only nine, but I call this person at nine. And I'm calling you at nine. Well, I'm only 15. Oh, you're the right age. The right age. Oh, absolutely the right age. My heart became very, very pricked by the Holy Spirit at 15, at 16. I gave it to Jesus Christ. At 17, I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
At 18, I was licensed to preach. Glory to God. Glory to God. So you're, you're without excuse. Son, no excuse. No excuse. God has need of you. Remember the donkey that he said, go down and get the go down and slap the donkey. If anyone asks you, someone that up, my master has need of even the donkey. Now, if you have a need of a donkey, certainly he had need of you. So that that specific thing that God has called you to accomplish, you must accomplish it. The purpose that you have been called into, you must do. And I got news for you. He gave to you a partner called the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. And he's walking with you, in you, through you to help you accomplish everything that God told you to accomplish. Yes. You can do it through the assistance of the Holy Ghost. Yes, you can. You can accomplish that mission, Brother Bob, in full. In full. Bobby, you can do it fully. Because you're called to it. Well, I think I'm going to do it this group. No, thank, you. thank God for the group. But there's things that God has placed on you to do that's personal between you and God to accomplish for the kingdom. So, many of those difficult things that you have been dealing with, many of the hurting things that you have gone through and people not understanding you. Have you been there? Yes. Have you been there? Yes. Can I give you a little secret? Really, what's been happening, hallelujah, has been God preparing you for your specific purpose. That's why the kinds of things you've been going through, you've been going through. Because the kind of people that you have to deliver. kind of places you have to take people out of. The kinds of situations you must deliver people from. So he's been preparing you for the purpose that he had put in you and called you to. Let me wrap this up. Hallelujah. So you are being prepared right now. Yes, you're calling. You, he's calling you to a personal connection of service that he has purposed you to do. And certain things are hard. But it's to get you ready. I'm sure that you that served in the armed forces, when you went to the armed forces, they didn't just take you to the banquet hall and sit you down in front of the screen for you to watch Looney Tunes. No, you had to go through training, boot camp, get, getting you ready for the task. Ahead. Can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So that he's calling you 
as you surrender into his will for the test ahead. Oh, how the Father longs. He has a longing for you. He has a longing for you to be in his service. He has a longing for you. Yes, but I'm in my 70s. So? Yes, but you can begin to make all these yes, but excuses. That is not going to do it, people. You are the right age. Yes, but I'm a hundred. Well, you're the same age that Abraham was. <laughs> to be you. Yes, but I'm 90. You're the same age that Sarah was. For the thing that I was birthing in her. God is birthing something in you, whatever your age is. God is birthing ministry, deliverance in you. What will thou have me to do as I close? I dare you to ask. And truly mean. Lord, what specific thing are you calling me to? Lord, what will you have, Bobby? What will you have, Austin? Austin would say to the Lord, Lord, what will you have me? Austin, you're going through some changes, son. But don't be sidelined. He didn't put you at the house of your grandmama to go crooked, but to go straight. Amen. Temptation to other kind of things is going to be tempting. But if you go the right way, and that's God's way, you're talking about a life full of joy. Certain things you can't even fix. But if you go God's way, he'll use you to fix it. Listen, listen. Fix it. Not your way. But Yahweh. Hallelujah. Make me and shape me, Lord, so that I will do those specifics for you. For the fathers, for the furthering of your kingdom, and for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will you dare to ask? Lord, Bobby Jones here, or whatever you, your name is, whatever your name is, let it be your prayer. Lord, Bobby Jones here, what's your name? What's your name? Dave, Pam, Pam here, Lord, Bobby Jones here. You just didn't bring me on the earth to occupy air. There's a big purpose for your kingdom. Lord, Martha Keith here, what specific thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you called me to do for the building of your kingdom? I challenge you to get serious and ask him, Lord. Whatever your name is. Here I am. Elise. Lord. A great calling you might say. What specifically. Have you called me. To do. 
Okay, Lord, I hear you. I'm readying myself to do Listen. Not only, not only do we trust God. Here's a big one. But God is saying, I want to trust you. What did he say about Job? Have you considered, have you considered Job? My servant, I trust Job. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But he's a man, but I trust, I trust him. But when I'm done with him, he, he, I will make him curse you through your face. I don't care if you try to make him do it. I trust Job in this. Amen. God has trust also in you. What a challenge from the Lord today. Go to our website, rolwohio.com, and you can link to any of our social media posts by Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. If you are in the Fremont, Ohio area, we invite you to come on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for a time of family work, uh, for a time of Bible study. On Sundays, you can come at 10 a.m. for a time of family worship. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you, and if you have a prayer request and you would like us to pray for you, go to our website and you can link to us on our email, and you can send your prayer requests to us. You can also link to PayPal and any of the social media posts. This past week, we did have a glitch in our email system, so if you got a crazy email that said it was coming from us, we were... It was not from us. Somebody else sent it, got our name and sent it. But we look forward to hearing from you. And remember, there is no God like our God nowhere.